Pretty exciting, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hey, so, you know, the last few weeks, um, we have been working with this idea of releasing, uh, of identifying and releasing old consciousness, old ways of being, anything that would hold us back from growing into our fullest potential, right? So like a caterpillar who gives way to become a butterfly or a snake that must shed its skin in order to grow, we must release restrictive consciousness. Those old ideas of what we thought were possible for us, what we felt that we were worthy of. So, you know, that's such a, an essential part of any process of growth and transformation. So you were supported, you've been supported in this work with the self-inquiry journal questions and our talks and the uh, self-awareness class, whether you decided to attend that or not. How many of you actually attended that self-awareness class? A few of you, yeah, okay. Did you find it helpful? Useful in this, pro in this process? Good, okay, excellent. Uh, and uh, so, you know, now we're, we're moving into the Easter time. At Easter, Passover, the spring, flowers are in bloom, the yellow pollen is here, yay! <laughs> With the exception of that yellow pollen, um, it's, it's a joyous time. It is, it is a time that holds promise, you know? And if we look at the Easter story purely metaphorically, purely metaphorically, we might see that this uh, metamorphosis process is symbolized by Jesus releasing his physical body, albeit in a very dramatic way, uh, you know, and rising up and continuing his mission in the purely non-physical spiritual realm, right? And at the same time, demonstrating this idea of overcoming the world, overcoming limitation consciousness. Uh, and so the story is that he, he suffered enormously on the cross, which may be true, you know? No, I wasn't there. It could also be true. I mean, maybe he experienced it like a butterfly does metamorphosis, like the, uh, the caterpillar completely dissolving in order for something new to be born, to be created, a butterfly with wings and those wings, as we mentioned the last few weeks, are strengthened through that process of trying to come out of the chrysalis. So perhaps his spiritual power was strengthened through that process. It's just an idea that's been floating around in my head. So I wanted to express it. You are free to, you know, have it represent to you anything that you choose it to represent. The, the, the only thing we really agree on in unity about this is that we know Jesus didn't die for our sins. We're not sinners, first of all. How could we be? We are beautiful expressions of the one divine life. We are infinite love expressing. We make mistakes out of our humanness, right? But, but we're not sinners. And this idea of sacrificing the lamb so that the whole herd, the, the, the greater community uh, can be saved, that's an ancient idea that predates Jesus. And it was a very popular idea. So you can kind of see how people gravitated to that concept. So we're going to talk in the next couple of weeks about some different ideas that we can kind of glean from this and Passover and all of these things that are happening now, maybe new ways of looking at them that can give us more meaning.
where we can find meaning for us. But in the meantime, you know, today we're shifting our focus away from this idea of releasing the old, and we're discovering and exploring this new magnificent possibility that is seeking to emerge through and as us. And as I was sharing last week, there, the clue for actually, you know, uh, seeing that possibility uh, could be to really uh, listen you know, listen to that divine urge within us, that divine urge that is pointing us in the direction of uh, expressing more of who we are, a, a greater expansion of ourself, that sense of expansiveness. And as I also mentioned, that sometimes that's uncomfortable. And when we think about actually going for that new possibility, it's sometimes scary, really scary. I also want to share with you that, you know, we, we also want to pay attention to what sparks joy in us. When you think about this new possibility that you're getting a gleam of, does it put a smile on your face? Does it open your heart? Does it, does it make your heart sing? And both of these things can exist at the same time. We can feel the spark of joy that makes our heart sing, and it can be scary. Both of those things can be true. So, you know, most of the time, very often, we get caught in the, the daily routine. Right? Our daily routine of taking care of ourselves, taking care of our loved ones, taking care of our homes, taking care of you know, whatever work that we have in the world, the daily routine that we don't always leave the room, the space for discovering and expressing that highest that is within us, that highest potential. We don't always think you know, the first thing we wake up in the morning, what is that magnificent vision that's trying to be birthed through me? <laughs> you know, and particularly the last two years, we have been spending a lot of time and effort protecting ourselves, protecting our loved ones, protecting our communities against COVID, which is understandable and totally, you know, absolutely important. But again, it doesn't always leave the room for listening to our soul's desire for expression. It's just the energy of protecting. Protecting is a different energy than opening to and listening to our, the, the, the desire of our soul that is pointing us in the direction of expressing more of our magnificence. But now that we are coming out of this pandemic, knock on wood, that's not a spiritual principle, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a superstition. It would be interesting to know where that came from. Uh, if you know, talk to me after the service. Uh, but, okay, so now that, and I know I said this six months ago, right? <laughs> I said, we're coming out of the pandemic but now I really mean it. I really mean it. <laughs> we seem to be. Okay, so now we're seeing a lot of people, um, they're leaving behind old ways of doing things, and they're opening to what's next. You know, a lot of people are looking for new ways to work, new ways to live, they're living in different places, people are moving all over, they're looking for different ways of being. They don't always know what that, that is yet, but, you know, they're looking. And the good news about this time is that we're thinking new thoughts. We're thinking new thoughts. You can't give birth to a new possibility when your mind is crowded with old thinking, old patterns of thinking. Many people live their lives.
guys thinking the same thoughts over and over, doing the same things over and over. You know, it's like, oh, I know what that is. I've had that thought before. Yeah, it's comfortable. I'm comfortable. You know, I've been perceiving that same experience the same way for all these years. Why should I challenge myself? Why should I, why should I question that? But isn't it the unquestioned answers as opposed to the unanswered questions? The unquestioned answers that keep us stuck in that loop. That loop of doing the same things in the same way over and over again. So it's time for new thoughts. <clears throat> And actually, isn't that what unity is? New thought. We're new thought. It's time we had some. A lot. <laughs> so let's challenge ourselves to opening to, to new thoughts. Excuse me. All right, so in order to stimulate new thinking <clears throat> uh, and to connect with really the source of new ideas, new thinking, that really is the first step in this process of transformation. That's the first step because we must, in order to see the new possibility, we must think anew. We must perceive things a little differently. We must open to new ways of seeing. So one of the best ways, I think, of doing that uh, and, uh, and, more, and fun ways of doing that is to surround ourselves with what inspires us. And preferably new things, new things that we hadn't thought of, that we hadn't tried before, or maybe the same thing but in a different way, with different people or on a different day or in a different location. And the sor sources of inspiration, I mean, just, they're endless. Mother Nature, first and foremost, right? A beautiful sunset, a mountaintop. YouTube. <laughs> I don't think that's nature. He says YouTube. No. <laughs> well, sometimes they have these beautiful nature videos, right? Well, With inspiration. Yeah. Incredible well, yes, right? Okay, I'm I, you're like inspi inspiring talks and presentations. Or music. Yeah, or music. Yeah, a, a beautiful piece of music. Yeah. And those, those nature videos, sometimes they're, you know, wa the waterfalls and the majestic uh, mountain range and the clouds and the, you know, gorgeous fields of flowers. It, it could even be the, just the little buds that are coming alive on that tree outside your window that you know looked dead for the past four months. That's inspiring. The sound of birds, the different songs of birds. They're, you just, you know, how many? And they're all unique and they're all beautiful. Uh, a great blue heron soaring just above the water. Geese, the sound of geese in the distance. Art, you know, art, walking an art gallery or a science museum. You know, so you can come from so many places. As you said, a, a good talk, um, you know, uh, an inspiring speech, an inspiring guided meditation. Uh, an athlete who um, goes beyond anything that anyone thought was possible. Anyone breaking through a barrier, all of that is so inspiring. So what we want to do is really move into that, find it, and uh, allow ourselves to experience it, to open to it. That word inspire is breathing in spirit. That's what it means, breathing in spirit. So you, we think when we're looking at something that inspires us that it is... Uh, the source of that is outside of us, but really what's happening is that it's triggering the inspiration in us. That place that we are inspired in spirit, 
one with the infinite, one with all of it. And what happens is that it begins to come alive. It gets activated. It, begins, it comes online. And with it comes new perspectives, new ways of looking at things, new ways of, uh, of thinking, of seeing, right? So find some new things to get inspired by and really allow yourself to be with it. Right, you know, like just not, oh, a lovely sunset. So what was I saying? <laughs> you know, <laughs> be with it. <laughs> be with the, the, the experience of it. Drink it in, immerse yourself in it. You might want to talk to other people, you know, about what inspires. Now, of course, not always. What inspires one person is not necessarily what inspires another. We know that. But sometimes it does. You know, Mary Angela. She insisted that uh, I go with her to the Museum of Natural History and Science, I think, to see this incredible exhibit. And I'm like, it's the middle of the week. And I'm, uh, okay. So I went, and oh my God, it was the most amazing thing. This guy, Christopher Marley, I think his name is. But he, okay, so he's a naturalist and an artist, and he travels all over the world, and he collects these. Beetle, colorful. They're all really amazingly, vibrantly colorful. Beetles and butterflies. Did you see it? No, I've seen the stuff. The, the pictures of it? Yeah. Uh, uh, shells, geodes, bird feathers, um, yeah, sea urchin shells. And, and so he takes them all, he preserves it, and he puts it, he's an artist, and he puts it in these intricate patterns, these beautiful, uh, like, like mandalas or mosaics. It was so inspiring. I went home and I told my family they needed to come with me. Well, we went like the next week and we, we, we all were inspired as well. So talk to other people, see what is, you know, what inspires and take it on. Allow yourself to really experience it. So one of the things that inspired me this week, in addition to that blue heron that Glides over the lake that's right outside of our backyard. So blessed. Um, what, what else inspired me was a sentence, one sentence that um, from Eric Butterworth, and he is defining uh, is his definition of God. And he says, God is spirit present in its entirety at every point in space all at the same time. I'll say that again. God is spirit present in its entirety at every point in space all at the same time. Breathe that in for a minute. Wow. So wherever we look, any place, the fullness of spirit is. And right where you are, the fullness of spirit is in your mind, in your, your essence, your spirit, and the fullness of spirit is in every one of those 37 trillion cells of your body. So think about that. Ooh. So that idea, you know, I have heard this, of course, idea before. It's not new. It's just I heard it in a different way. You know, sometimes when you hear something in a different way, it suddenly awakens something in you, and you go, oh, I got it. And so it just, it enlivened my, I used it in my uh, affirmative prayer practice. It just enlivened my affirmative prayer. Uh, and, okay, so that inspiration came with an entire week of inspiration because I took the uh, spirit, one of the spiritual explorers classes, uh, Paul Hasselbeck's to be specific, and you take a Paul Hasselbeck class, yeah, you, <laughs> you're, you're definitely going to question your answers and uh, look at new ways of thinking and new ways of uh, looking at things, certainly. And there's something about taking a class every evening or whatever time it is, you know, five days a week all on top of each other. And it just sort of builds one on the other. So by the time you're done, you're in a completely different place 
than you were before you start. You know, that's it's quantum growth. Something about the intensity of those classes leads to propelling you into quantum growth. So if you missed the Spiritual Explorers Week this year, don't miss it next year. So it's always at the same time, that, I mean the same week, which is the last week in March. Uh, so it'll be next year. Don't miss it because it's really, wow, you're, you know, it's a completely different uh, experience of spiritual growth. All right. So uh, secondly, um, to get these new thoughts percolating so that we can see the new possibility when it arises, when it, uh, when it wants to be known, right, so that we can see it, is to approach our daily routine differently, a little differently. Do things differently. Switch it up. And, and it could be just little things, right, like try a new food you've never tried before. Wear a different, you know, kind of clothing than you had before. Take a new route to work or wherever it is you're going. Get lost. I kind of like getting lost. I mean, if I don't have somewhere to be, yeah. Yeah, you get lost and you go, oh, look, I never knew that was there. Wow. I was going down the, uh, the road the other day and I, and I, and I looked, uh, and I think it was because the, also the leaves were, you know, uh, there's no leaves in the trees. So you can see there was a geodesic dome home there. I'd never seen that before. And I started wondering, wow, what's it like to live in a geodesic dome? You know, how do they separate the, the bedroom from the living room? And is there an upstairs? And I, <laughs> what is that like? So it just kind of, uh, it stimulated my imagination. And that's the idea. I'm thinking new thoughts, you know? Listen to new music, new genre of music. So one of the things I admire about my husband, Dana, who's over there, you know, he, he listens to all different genres of music. And I remember when we were first started dating, you know, it's like bluegrass. And I'm like, bluegrass? You know that's Christian based, right? You're Jewish. A <laughs> He's like, I love all the best part of all genre of music. So switch it up. Try something new. You know, go, go for the best of that genre. I'm not sure watching a new TV show fits into this category. <laughs> Although, I have to say, when I watched the great British baking show during the <laughs> lockdown, I learned new words. I learned new ways of cooking. I learned different styles. I gained an appreciation for desserts. I also gained a few unwanted pounds, so not sure uh, that had the intended effect, but, but you get my point. So try new things. Try doing what you're doing, just little things. So here's your assignment for this week is number one, immerse yourself in things that inspire you. Surround yourself with things that inspire you, that fill your heart that make you come alive, that go, oh, yeah, oh. You know, and spend some time drinking it in and, and, uh, and sharing it with others so that they can also have that experience. And then do five things differently. And they don't have to be big, right? Little things. Do five things differently this week. And notice, begin to notice. Are you thinking new thoughts? Are you getting new, new ideas? Are you perceiving things differently? And is it sparking joy? And what exactly sparks joy in you? And you want to kind of get a sense. It's a good way to get a sense of that possibility that's seeking to emerge, right? We, what we're doing is we're setting the stage. We're setting the stage. We're opening to it to that new possibility, to a more expansive way of living. Don't we all want to have a more expansive way of living? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> we don't want to be thinking.
thinking the same thoughts, getting trapped in that, you know, loop. We want to have an expansive experience of life. So this helps set the stage for that, and we, we grow into it. So, yeah. Do this. Come back next week and let me know how it goes. All right, namaste.